through Get There ATX and to Solo Cycling, I learned about the various trails. And so because I live in Central East Austin and now in the Mueller neighborhood or Miller neighborhood, uh, I can take it from Bartholomew Park and ride all the way down, pretty much downtown to like Fifth Street and take a little alley and go all the way down and end up by the convention center, all on protected paths or, or urban trails or shared use trails like you're on right now and feel really, really safe. So for the community, for those people that you who walk to work, bike to work, take scooters to work, this is a great and safe path for them to get to and from their workplace or to the grocery store. Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman and that is Movita Salter from Austin, Texas. And I am absolutely delighted to share this conversation with you. Uh, Movita was a, a person who was profiled in a recent People for Bikes uh, video uh, regarding the Final Mile project uh, that is, you know, Austin is, is a part of. And uh, it, it's such a wonderful story that Movita has. And uh, I'm just absolutely delighted to share this with you. Movita Salter. Movita, such a pleasure having you on the Active Towns podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me. Really so Movita, um, we have never met, <laughs> but I yep. feel like I know you a little bit already. And and we'll talk about that later because you were profiled in a fantastic video uh, that People for Bikes uh, produced as part of the Final Mile Project. And uh, w w and again, like I said, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But uh, if you don't mind, would you would you give just a, a brief little introduction uh, as to who you are and how you ended up in, in Austin? Well, my name is Movita Salter and I am a military brat. So I grew up all over the United States, but also lived in San Antonio, went to high school in San Antonio. And uh, through my military career and marriage, I ended up in um, California, Northern California. And as my children graduated high school, we made the decision to return to Texas and move to Austin because my young, my oldest daughter, excuse me, was at the University of Texas in Austin. And so my children and I moved cross country from Northern California back to Austin in 2016 uh, and uh, decided to live in Austin. Wow, fantastic. Okay, so uh, I have some Northern California roots myself. Uh, what part of Northern California were you in? I lived in a small town named Fairfield, which is about 20 mile, twenty minutes, excuse me, from Napa. Yeah. And I worked in Hayward, California, which was oh, yeah. about an hour and a half drive. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I did that yeah. for eight oh, years. Oh my gosh, yeah. you must have just been tortured. That is a, a long drive. It yeah. was miserable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and really, as the crow flies, it's not as long, but just the traffic in that area is, is really brutal. Yeah. Traffic was bad. Yeah. Uh, tunnels, tolls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you name it. Yeah. It's quite adventurous. <laughs> So I, I grew up uh, not far from from where you were at there. I was up the um, the Interstate 80 corridor in a small little town called Lincoln, California. And okay. back when I grew up there in, in the 70s through the early 80s, uh, it was I think we only had like 4000 people. It was, you know, yeah. we used to joke and say it's kind of like a little cow town. You know, it's like I, I grew up on a small little ranch in the foothills uh, as you made your way up to Lake Tahoe. So it was, you yeah. know. Very, very uh, interesting environment to grow up in. Very hot in the summertime, and uh, it, but it, it was very interesting. So, okay, so you had a little bit of that Bay Area sort of temperate zone. Then you decided to get hot and come here to <laughs> to Texas. Yeah, again. <laughs> yeah. I've lived in over ten states, so I've lived in yeah. some really hot climates and some really cold climates. So it yeah. was really coming back home. Okay. My parents live in San Antonio. So yeah. used to the heat, love the heat actually. Okay. Very good. So, so, you know, <laughs> the fact that we're having one of the hottest Junes ever with a uh, hundred degree uh, temperature, uh, you know, it's a yeah, piece of cake for you. You're just like, yeah, no, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and, and and we're here to talk about bikes because bikes are a big part of of your story um, that was profiled in in this particular video that we're talking about. And uh, so, why don't you kind of share a little bit about how the bike came back into your life? 
Well, in, um, in 2016, when I moved cross country, I found out that I had this rare form of cancer. And uh, I went through, as, as soon as I got to Austin, I found a dermatology oncologist and went through some surgeries in, at the end of 2016. And uh, two days later, I was out walking, uh, just out in nature. And I really wanted to figure out how to integrate exercise and being outside um, you know, by myself and enjoy myself because I was new to the city and didn't know anyone. So I, you know, I dusted off my uh, Schwinn cruiser and quickly realized that it was heavy <laughs> and I was weak. Um, and, but found some, a small bike community to join in town and started riding uh, with them, albeit slowly, uh, until I purchased a newer, lighter bike. Yeah. And here it is. New bike day. There it is. New bike day. <laughs> I love that bike. Yeah, I love that bike too. And and what's great is that bike is very prominently uh, featured in the film. Um, and uh, it, it was it was just such a wonderful um, experience seeing that film. I, I I'm not um, at all ashamed to say that it brought tears to my eyes, and I found mm-hmm. it quite moving. And um, so your health has improved. You're, you're cancer free now. Is that I, correct? I'm cancer free now. Yes. 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 Fantastic. And, and you found your, your, your group, your tribe, you know, it's I like found you found, folks. you found people that you could ride with and, and it, how important was that for you to be able to find a, a, a group of people that, um, that you could get out and, and have fun with and go ride? It's so super important to, to number one, to find your folks, to find your people. Um, Everybody doesn't have the super expensive bike. Everyone doesn't have the bicycle kit to wear. You know, we're not all elite athletes. And so sometimes when you hear the word cycling, it's a little intimidating. So it was great to find people who who ride for uh, not leisure, but for fun and for transportation and to just for the joy of it. And so I have found my tribe and it, it makes uh, cycling for me more enjoyable and more fun because it's not really about the destination. It is really about the journey. Um, <laughs> I always have something in my basket, a little drink, a little snack or something. And so it's, it's, we always have a great, great time. And so, yeah. and we pair it with things, you know, yeah. ride yeah. and eat, ride and hang, ride and swim. Yeah. And we and we see that this uh, this photo has has our masks on because uh, you were riding right through the pandemic. We absolutely rode during the pandemic. We decided that um, you know outside is open, outside is free, right. and the roads were the safest that they were ever going to be in the middle of the pandemic. So riding <laughs> sure. down Sixth Street, which is normally treacherous, right. was. <laughs> quite enjoyable and a little otherworldly right. uh, riding your bike. But it was really it was a really great time to get outside of the house and enjoy nature in a safe environment with others who'd also been cooped up in their homes. Right, right. Yeah. Talk a little bit about this particular ride and why this was so special for you. Well, I had participated in the first uh, Black History social bike ride uh, in uh, I think it was June of 2020. And so this was the one in 2022, this year, just a few weeks ago. And the people featured there are the Major Taylor Cycling Group, which is a cycling group named after Major Taylor, who was an African-American cyclist uh, a long time ago. And so this is a nationwide- One of the best of his era. He was was an elite cyclist, yes. And so this group, the reason they're important to me is the very first bike ride, I have this single three speed bicycle and we are riding in Weberville and places with a lot of hills <laughs> and I was not ready. <laughs> so they would stay back with me and I was at the back of the pack of several hundred people and they would stay back with me, ma'am, are you okay? And so I really appreciated it. And the gentleman in the yellow is the president of the Austin chapter, his name's Chris Maldonado. And he, when we were going through, this is supposed to be a easier route this year, it was easier, but it, I still wasn't ready. And members of his team still came back to the back in the, at, at University of Texas to, to see if I was okay. I finally hopped off my bike, pushed it up those hills, hopped back on. But I really appreciate 
uh, their camaraderie and their representation and the support that they provide for this event and uh, many other events. They had people who were volunteering like the gentleman in the yellow, and they were also handing out hydration and water and tips and things like that. So yeah. I really enjoy working with them. They are great people. I love that you just mentioned that about jumping off the bike, pushing it up and, 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 and then just jumping back on. There's there's no problem with that, right? I mean, that's a great no message to. There's no shame. There's a great message to reinforce for folks if they're, you know, new to cycling or, or or you know riding a bike or you know just getting into it. It's like, yeah, it's sometimes you you have to do that. I've had to do it. <laughs> you you have to do it. Um, you know, it, as you stated, it was over a hundred degrees that day. Um, you want to be safe, and I didn't want to have an accident, and so. The safest thing to do and the most expeditious thing to do for me was to hop off, reserve my energy, get up that hill, drink some more water and hop right back on. And so, no, I felt no shame whatsoever. I even announced it. I'm getting off my bike. (laughs) I love it. I love it. So I'm going to go back to the bike here. Um, it, It looks very familiar. What type of bike is that? It's called a Priority Classic, so it's made yeah. by a company in Cali- I mean, in New York, yeah. and I bought it because I am not a cyclist. It has a uh, rubber, probably not rubber, drive train thing, and that's probably not the term, instead of a chain. Right, that is a that. carbon gates uh, drive chain, yeah, an internal hub in the back, yeah, fantastic. Yes, and- and it has the brakes like when you're a kid where you reverse backwards so it's Coaster less brakes. for me to yeah. have to deal with and it has maybe I mean, they might be called run flat tires or non-puncture tires or punctureless tires i don't know so it's a bike that requires less maintenance and right. it's easy for me to maintain so i take it to the cycle a local cycle company every year for a little tune-up right and really that's all i have to do and for someone who's the type of cyclist or rider that i am it's perfect. Right. And it's upright. Right. So yes. as an older person, it is great on my back and people are always commenting. I love that you sit up on your bicycle and You're it right. feels great. Yeah. <laughs> I, we like to call that sort of a Dutch style bike where you're able to sit upright. You're able to relax. You're, there's no stress on your neck. There's no stress on your hands because you're able to have less uh, weight being supported by your hands on the handlebars. And yes, priority bikes are fantastic. I myself have a priority bike with that same carbon drive, uh, you know, uh, replacing the chain. And uh, they are fantastic. I thought that was looked familiar. That's great. (laughs) I I get so many compliments on the bike and I really purchased it for the um, the ease of use. Yeah. And it seemed like the least intimidating bicycle that I would actually ride. Right. Right. And well, that was I mean, the goal. because it's it's not about the bike. That's the whole point is it's like right. it's not about the bike. It's about it's just comfortable. You can just get on and you can just go and you don't have to become a bike mechanic. You don't have to be a, you know, a, a cyclist per se or an expert. You can just get on and ride. I also like that it has a basket. I've put a new basket on it since yeah. then, the priority basket. And it also has the little cargo thing in the back. And I put my groceries in there, put on a backpack. I, I, I'm fortunate enough to live one mile from our local HEB and I can, I always overpurchase. I figure out how to, <laughs> to ride down there and grab a few groceries and come home. And so it's, it's super helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a pro tip for you uh, with shopping um, with uh, when you go shopping at HEB, you know, I actually take my panniers off of my bike, take them in with me and put them into the into the cart. And that way I can, you know, OK, I can get this much groceries. <laughs> That's a pro. That is absolutely the tip I needed. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I love it. This is so cool. And what a what a great group of of people that you have found to 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 ride with. How how special and how important has that been, you know, over these years of of keeping you active and keeping you moving? The girl in the yellow bike, uh she her name's Judith and she didn't have a bike. So, uh we went on a ride um with um it used to be called Smart Trips, and it's now called Get Their ATX, and they were providing right. the bikes, right? Yeah. So they introduced her to the Yellow Bike Project, and she volunteered, and she built that Yellow Bike. Right. So now, then I had a partner in crime who could ride with me, 
So that was, again, um, removing barriers and um, just ease of access so that we can hop on our bikes together because it makes it easy, right? right? So now she has, she doesn't have to rent one or anything. And we are able to ride with this other social group and just hop on our bikes and go. And so it's that it's super important because for me, um, you know, outside is my therapy, outside is my, <laughs> I get a lot of thinking done on, on the bikes and it is an immediate improvement of my mood when I'm outside and when I'm riding on my bike. So, right. and I really get to know my neighborhood so much better because again, in our cars, we are focused on the destination. Right. Right. And so you miss a lot. And so on the bicycles, I've learned so much about my neighborhood just by being on my bike. So, yeah. and it's almost so much fun to do with someone else than it is to do all by yourself. Yeah. I'm so glad that you mentioned both Get There ATX, which is a city program that's that's part of the um, Austin Transportation Mobility Department um, and uh, and I'm also so incredibly grateful that you mentioned Yellow Bike which is a wonderful nonprofit uh, that is sort of the the community cycles collective where people can still uh, do a earn a bike build a bike program and uh, but you can also donate parts there and you know donate entire bar bikes there uh you can learn how to work on your bike and be able to learn maintenance skills you can uh, as you mentioned you can volunteer time there and actually build your bike <laughs> if you want to do that uh so yeah huge huge props on and shout out for the yellow bike program and the project it's fantastic Absolutely. I'm going to one of their uh, fix a flat type trainings uh, in July. So I'm really excited about that. Excellent. Yeah, that's a good, that's a really good point too. Um, that's a, an essential skill that everybody should have. Uh, the priority bikes do tend to have flat resistant um, tires, but they're probably not completely flat proof. So it's a good thing to have that skill just in case uh, you need it for your own bike or to help a friend out. Help a friend. Absolutely. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. So when when you look back on, you know, this time of, you know, reconnecting with the bike and, you know, how, you know, what are some of the emotions that that come up for you for for that connection? Because it's obviously there was some significant things going on in your life that, right. you know, sort of <laughs> brought this to the forefront. Yeah, I mean. So when you go through any type of trauma, you go through, you know, your 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 depressions and, and feeling as if you can't. And so being on my bike let me know that I could. And it was also helping me become stronger. And just being outside, of course, improves your mood. And um, I use that time now that I have the bike. I was able to spend time with my son, as you can see here. Um, he is, I'm not sure how old he is in this picture, but we are riding on the southern walnut creek trail that day and he has on his cool american uh captain america glasses and so you know just joy and 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 bonding with my young son so that he could also have a lifetime of, of having a bike as well he was a late starter on a, on riding a bike uh, he had a bike with training wheels and you know they do not help you ride a bike so i put him in a local rei program when we yeah. moved to austin and in 15 minutes, those people at REI had taught him how to ride a bike. He was right. the biggest kid there, but he had the biggest smile. And yeah. so he joined He joined the bike riding community and had independence. And we were able to go on little jaunts together, you know. And so he has a, a, a much nicer bike now that he's, he's 14 now. Oh, so, wow. Um, yeah. Okay. He's 14 now and he still rides his bike. And of course, when you're 14, bike gives you a little bit of independence, right? So... Um, it's, it was an integral part of my healing, but more than that, um, it helped me connect with uh, my children because my daughter, my eldest daughter, she rides my dad's 1970 Schwinn that he gave her when okay. she was at UT and she still has it. So she uses her bike because it's great at the college and the university because cars, you know, no bueno um, at the yeah. university. There's no space for them. So she would use put her bike on the bus and, uh, yeah. you know, once she got to the school, ride around campus. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm really glad you mentioned uh, that about his experience with the training wheels. And uh, we now know uh, after sort of like some years of trial and error and everything that that kids actually learn best uh, going from a what's called a balance bike where they can uh, there's actually no pedals on them. They can actually get used to balancing on the bike and then gliding and then balancing and gliding and uh and then they're able to make that transition to uh to a pedal bike uh much quicker because they have those skills of the glide and the balance on the bike and so we now know that actually the um uh, the training wheels actually hold kids back because they're not developing the motor skills and the proprioceptive skills of being able to balance and so it was great to hear that uh, the folks at rei uh, were able to get him gliding and moving yeah it was a godsend it was like they had worked some sort of magic because he just couldn't get it and he was feeling really uh, defeated because right. i'm so old and i'm so big and i can't do this and little kids can do it yeah. so you know i didn't grow up with the balance bike but it is i did buy one for my grandson he's only he's only one yep. that's okay yep <laughs> so i did buy one for my grandson so he will have the benefit of that new knowledge so he can make a quicker transition to yeah. uh, riding a, a pedal bicycle when he's older. Yeah. And you're never too old to um, to oh, learn absolutely. how to ride a bike. And that's actually what we do for teaching adults how to ride bikes who don't have that uh, that that knowledge and that skill they never learned as children. And so we actually um, create a situation where we create a balanced bike out of an adult size bike by taking the pedals off and then uh, lowering the seat so that they can, again, they can use their feet, they can get the glide going, build that skill. And then once they're able to hit get the glide going, turn come to a stop and then you put the pedals back on and same thing you you can you can take what would have been you know probably hours of you know (laughs) frustrating learning how to ride a bike for an adult and and transform that into uh, a a rather short you know period and so uh, for anybody out there listening and watching watching this if you're not currently riding and you're you're a little intimidated by it uh, it's never too late (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, I'm a board member with Jasava Cycling Initiative, and they are having a Learn to Ride Your Bike um, program coming up next month. So people could join that as well. Another favorite nonprofit of mine is the Jasala Cycling uh, Group, and and uh, you know they're doing so many wonderful uh, programs. Uh, they primarily focus over on the east side of town, as well as some initiatives yeah. down in San Antonio, uh, your former hometown, and uh, and and they just they they've got the. Uh, the golden rollers program they've got the education program uh we've spotlighted i've spotlighted uh the gisalo uh foundation group um on the podcast uh in the audio only version i need to get them back on so we can do a video uh version uh but they they have also a lot of uh fun experiential rides now this looks like it might be on the east side was this a social uh ride over on the east side this is a social ride this i I think this is um, what we call the Sunday cruise, and nice. um, it is purely a s- slow roll, <laughs> no drop ride where yeah. we we meet up and we have a, a we stop someplace to socialize and then we ride back to the start point. And so this is that bridge in the Mont- Montopolis area that's a, yep. on the side of the toll road there. Yep. So yes, this is East Austin. Yeah, and they are a great bunch of people. They. Um, will train you how to ride if you're fearful you know everyone's super helpful you know they call out call out uh, obstructions and she will show you hand signals and it's it's really a great safe way to ride with people and you always meet someone new this is the same this is the sunday cruise as well this was a special one that was during south by southwest i think and this gentleman in the front was an artist and had created that bike and he rode a little bit with us um on uh, Ladybird Lake Trail okay. down there um, in the back. And this is, uh, there's some basketball courts on the right. I can't remember exactly the name. I think it's close to Fiesta Beach, but I don't think it's Fiesta Beach. Right. But um, again, great, great time. That's me in the back with the dashiki on on, the, on my left. Right. And 
we had a great time. We went and looked at art that day in addition to writing. And if you noticed, there were kids. Yeah. And this is a group called Spokesy Folks. It's another social ride group. It is a, a group that is specifically for femme, women, non-binary, trans people. But this was a special event that we had um, in my neighborhood in, in Mueller. And uh, we had lots of children with us that day. And we rode to look at the holiday lights in the neighborhood. So this is right across the, from the thinkery on the right. And there is a statue in Mueller that is a le- uh, the Loch Ness Monster. And their Nessie, name is Nessie. Yeah. So we are directly in front of Nessie. And so we rode through the neighborhood in December and let all the young ones check out the lights. And us old ones, too. I love it. I love it. That's so cool. So you're you're a, a resident of Miller. That's fantastic. I am. <laughs> I love that neighborhood. And uh, for folks that haven't seen my profile video of Miller, make sure you check it out. It's over in the playlist of the Austin's Dutch Inspired Cycle Network um, a playlist and uh it, it's great preston tyree who is also a resident there in and miller he uh basically does a, a tour around uh, around the neighborhood and talking about some of the history of the cycle network development there so you're able to actually um truly benefit from living in a neighborhood and i know exactly where your heb is there where you can yeah. easily ride a bike to meet your daily needs talk a little bit about how powerful and empowering that is for you to live in miller so in choosing i used to live in central east austin and so in choosing a neighborhood i wanted to keep my son in the uh same school you know progress that he went so he was at campbell and i wanted him to end up at mccallum which which is where he is currently and so that's why i chose this neighborhood in addition to it being a walkable neighborhood and being a bikeable neighborhood and um it's a safe bikeable neighborhood for me as someone who does not feel like they're a cyclist uh, because it's got the protective bike lanes it's got bike lanes it's got trails you know so it's mixed use and they are extending the uh, Southeast Parkway. So we're gonna have additional bike, hike and bike trails out here. So it's really important to me because I can hop on my bike and go see a movie at the Animal Draft House. I can hop on my bike and go down to the park and hang in my hammock. I can uh, ride to the farmer's market. I'm blessed that we have a farmer's market here every Sunday, you know, enjoy myself, buy some food, uh, just, sit at the park and it and and the neighborhood is has lots of events that we can enjoy so it's real and, and there's two pools so i really have zero excuse not to be outside i live close to the spider sculpture and so uh, right in front of the trail so i can hop on my bike and when i do have short things to do it's easier for me to hop on my bike because i don't have to worry about parking and um i can get there really quick because everything is so close in the neighborhood yeah, it sure is. I love it. That's so cool. I, I, I'm delighted to hear that you're living in that neighborhood. It's without a doubt the most um, built out um, of our cycle network, of the Dutch-inspired high comfort network. And uh, for those who are unfamiliar with the, the Miller neighborhood, and, and yes, it, it is pronounced both ways, Mueller and Miller. Yes, I know. <laughs> uh, it used to be the old airport. Uh, and so yes. it, it's a completely um, new neighborhood in the sense that it used to be the airport. They did retain um, the... Uh, the tower uh, that was, you know, the functioning tower of the airport, but the all the runways have been replaced uh, with, you know, a new uh, grid pattern of, of streets, uh, some of the earlier neighborhood uh, developments, some of the, er, the streets that were, were developed early on. The tree canopy is growing in, and so you're getting a little bit of that protection from the hot sun. Uh, there's currently a new middle school that's being built um, right yeah. uh, right there in the, uh, the neighborhood. Um, so it's, it's truly a, a, a special place. The, the other neat thing that I love about, um, you know, sort of that network, I, I, I have dear friends that live up there uh, in, in Preston and Ani, and so I get on my bike and, and I ride up that way. And so when I'm riding up that way from where I live, which is down in the Zilker Park neighborhood, I end up getting on this trail. This is the Boggy Creek Trail. And 
Uh, this is from a ride that I did uh, up to the MLK station, which is where my, my cousin Cody lives. And um, so I'm riding on this. This is one of the more recent complete build outs of mm-hmm. a truly safe and inviting uh, network. Um, and so the connectivity over on the east side is is getting better and better and better. And, uh, and, and, you're, and, and we're going to see in just a moment here that uh, as I was writing this and filming this, this was actually part of the Juneteenth celebration this past weekend. Uh, I think you were probably out and about doing celebrations as well. How important is it to have this level of connectivity over on the east side, you know, for, for everyone to be able to, to enjoy the outdoors and be able to get to meaningful places? Right. So I'll tell you for myself personally, when I first moved here because I was dealing with cancer, I wasn't working. And so for two years, I volunteered at South by Southwest. And the first two years that that I did it, I I rode my bike. I didn't know the area well, and my bike was heavy. And this would this did not this part right here did not exist. Right. Uh, the part that across the street there that you're going to in its, yeah, in its this current This is actually format. relatively new here, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't know about the Boggy Creek Trail. And so I was taking the city streets and I was felt unsafe. And, you know, I was a little scared and it was a little dicey for my big, heavy beach cruiser. Um, but then through Get There ATX and Tosalo Cycling, I learned about the various trails. And so because I lived in Central East Austin and now in the Mueller neighborhood or Miller neighborhood, uh, I can take it from Bartholomew Park and ride all the way down, pretty much downtown to like Fifth Street and take a little alley and go all the way down and end up by the convention center, all on protected paths or, or urban trails or shared use trails like you're on right now and feel really, really safe. So for the community, for those people that you who walk to work, bike to work, take scooters to work, this is a great and safe path for them to get to and from their workplace or to the grocery store. Um, As you can see, all the people who are casually walking either for the health of it or for the fun of it or to get from one place to another, this, this is perfect. And so it's nice that a neighborhood that traditionally did not have this access and these services are now benefiting because they are the people who probably need it um, uh, the most because they may or may not have a vehicle. And now people, it's not even about economics now. Some some of us are making choices not to drive because it's good for the earth or gas prices are over $5. And hey, let me hop on my bike or, or walk somewhere. So it's great to have what I call safe corridors to get to and from, because it again, it remove barriers, ease of access will increase people's participation in riding bike. Yeah, yeah. And I love it too, because we're about to get to a, a section here that really emphasizes the connectivity that these trails have to the neighborhood. Off to the right here, you'll be able to see that there's a little trail that, you know, connects right into into the, the neighborhood and, uh, and and gives people the ability to, uh, to get from, you know, the residential neighborhoods to this activity asset. And and like you said, you know, the, the using leveraging this activity asset to get to meaningful destinations, and uh, eventually in this video here we get up to the uh, the MLK station, you know, a station that is just absolutely you know critical to uh, giving people transit, rail transit to get to downtown. Yes, it's not that far. You can actually ride it within a, in, in about a fifteen to twenty minute uh, period of time. But there are some, you know, disconnects. Yeah, you mentioned it around yeah. Fifth Street there. Um, so there's a little bit of stuff that needs to be worked on. But gosh, you know, on a hundred degree day, maybe you've got your bike with you. You can jump on the red line, get on down uh, into the downtown area. And the other thing that I love about this is off to the right here, you see the ballparks. And so yep. an opportunity for, you know, for little leaguers and softball players, you know, the kids. And here's another one of the paths going into the neighborhood there, connecting, you know, the, the neighborhood area to the trail, to the ballpark, 
Amazing. And then off to the left here, you'll see a community garden, which helps serve the all of the housing that's going in in the in the MLK station area, which is and it's just so cool. Even on a hot day like it was that day last weekend when it was over 100 degrees, there's a couple people out there working in the garden and connecting to nature. So incredibly important. Yeah, I love this. This I was so excited when this opened up and they had a little around, I guess, around Halloween a couple of years ago when they opened this section up uh, yeah. because I used to live right behind this area here on the left. Um, and uh, I have actually taken my bike on the train and learned how to uh, connect it so that I can ride once I got downtown. It's yeah. perfect for, as I said, South by Southwest or ACL right. to, so you don't have to deal with that. Uh, just You just don't have to deal with Austin parking. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when you have high quality, safe and comfortable facilities and access to, uh, you know, high quality rail transit to be able to get downtown, then you're, you're absolutely right. You really don't have to, you know, do that battle. And you mentioned it earlier. I mean, we're currently sitting at, you know, gas prices in the five dollars plus per gallon. Um, yeah, every opportunity you can take to jump on the bike and you know, make that trip an alternative trip, make it on a bike. Yeah. Yeah. Take transit, maybe, maybe mix modes. And here's, uh, I, I wanted to, to show this particular thing because this is an opportunity for see for people who are riding the, the, their bike to the transit line, they can actually get a, a key card access and lock their bike up in this secure parking spot. So it's a, a great opportunity to, um, you know, reinforce that you can do what you did, which was, you know, sort of combine modes, you know, have your bike, bring it onto the train, or if you don't need it on the train, you're not planning on riding it at the end of your journey, you can lock it up securely at that location. Good stuff. Very empowering. <laughs> so one of the things that I thought would be fun for us to do is, is to actually play your video. Would that be okay? Of course. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Um, and it's uh, again about seven minutes long um and what we'll do is we'll after after we're done playing it we'll we'll just kind of you know talk a little bit about um sort of the response that you have had and, and some of the things that, that that you know some of the reflections that you have you know since this has gone out there and and i don't know if you know this or not but you're world famous now <laughs> <laughs> nope, didn't know that. <laughs> well, it it it, it really it is a beautifully done film, and um, and and again, the People for Bikes organization. It's an organization that I've had the honor to to work with, um, you know, over the years, and so it's great to to be able to share this. You feel everything from all of your senses. It is very healing to be outside with your own thoughts, have the sun on your face. It's just very restorative. I really enjoy riding my bike, not so much as a sport, but really about integrating it into my everyday life. I always feel so accomplished when I ride my bike. My name is Movita Salter, and I live in Austin, Texas. Austin is the fastest growing large metropolitan area in the country, which is both incredibly exciting and brings us some significant challenges. Can we convince U.S. cities to take their plans for building out a bicycle network that might extend 20 years and ask them to do the same amount of work in just two years? It's a really tough sell to convince advocates, elected leaders, and city staff to come together knowing that there's going to be people who oppose the project, knowing that there's not enough money, and that there's other priorities in the community other than building a bicycle lane or fixing a sidewalk. The Final Mile is a mobility playbook to rapidly implement a safe and complete mobility network in communities across the country. 
I think we can all agree that accessibility, whether it's to a grocery store, to a job, is a benefit to an individual as well as a community. The physical benefits are unmeasurable. Being able to look at other people, talk to other people, be friendly with other people. There's no medication that can do that for you. The final mile is about the power of people working collaboratively together towards the same goal. Biking, walking, public transit, those are all new opportunities that help us address these community-wide challenges. And they also have the added benefit of being less expensive, more reliable, and they help people connect to their communities in new ways. I am a military brat, and so I've lived in about 10 states. I moved back to Texas in 2016. I quit a well-paying job, sold my home, and moved three of my four children, and did that alone, so it was very stressful. As we were driving cross-country, I got a call from my doctor, and she said, you have a very rare form of cancer, and you need to be treated for it immediately. Relocating is hard, just in general. The added trauma of finding out, literally on the highway, it was devastating. It was soul crushing. It was really a lot. I was in a new city, didn't know anyone. America has built our mobility network currently around the personal vehicle. We shouldn't be trapped based on the kind of networks that we've built. We shouldn't have to drive a car because there's no sidewalks, there's no trails, there's no bike lanes. What we want are communities where people can wake up and make choices. But it's hard politically, especially in Texas, where people love their cars, to get people to vote to invest money in active transportation. I can tell you that I have driven through neighborhoods for years and rode my bike once and saw a completely different place. We got data back that 70% of folks supported protected bike lanes. Really being able to lead with data and then connect directly with mayors and council people that their community wants these mobility networks and they want them quick and they want them to be safe and comfortable. A thing that makes cities and communities so great is the connections that we make. Mobility in terms of how our neighbors and ourselves get around communities is a way to help break down barriers that exist when we are all driving alone in our cars. I began the process of having multiple surgeries to first remove and then to reconstruct the scar on my face. I started looking for opportunities to just get outside and meet new people. I started going to various meetups. One of them was riding your bike around Austin. When we talk about diverse communities, it doesn't just happen. You actually have to produce opportunities for it to happen. People are out here experiencing the path. Old people, young people, white people, black people, brown people, Asian people, everybody they're going to use this trail because it's accessible to them. That's how you build a truly diverse community. Austin making a concerted effort to broaden bike paths have really encouraged that non-traditional cyclist to come outside, dust off that old bike, and start biking again. The final mile set out to answer a question. Could U.S. cities move faster, more efficiently, and more equitably to deliver mobility networks to residents across the country? The answer to that is yes. Austin will say, we had a vision for what a bicycling network could look like across this city, and we've done it. 
It's a place known for big trucks. It's a place known for highways. If Austin can do this, there's no reason why any community across the country can't do it as well. The bike community has broadened its definition and become more inclusive to include me and people like me. I hope that other cities take note and do the same. Getting back outside is what helped me get my confidence back and get back on my feet. Everybody should have that opportunity. I'm telling you, it gets me every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. I, it, me too. That that was a. It was it was fun to relive it and the yeah. filming of it and some of the things that I talked about did hit home even even after I've seen it again. Yeah, yeah. So when I when I see that, and uh, and I've been following the Final Mile project across the the many years that it has been going on and 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 actually um, following some of those cities. Uh, through the Big Jump project, which was the project prior to the final mile. <laughs> so I've been following them for the better part of five, six years now. And um, a lot of the the challenges that cities have, whether it's it's Denver or Providence or New Orleans or, you know, many of these other cities that are out there, they're trying to make change, um, is the resistance that comes up. And so, and that was sort of mm -hmm. mentioned very, very briefly there. You're in the midst of this. You're not a bike advocate. You're you're not the you know somebody who's vested in this in the same way that those of us who are working in this arena. Um, what advice do you have, and what what sort of um, I guess really experiential um, guidance do you have for somebody who is experiencing this from the other side you're really benefiting from these networks starting to be built out what guidance would you have or advice would you have for you know kind of those cities that are struggling and 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 fighting against the resistance to change any 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 counts advice and counsel I, I don't know I, I don't I can tell you my opinion I don't know if I have any advice or counsel um we're doing it for uh, the earth we're doing it for our children's future if you're if you're an employer who doesn't want a bike route to their place that encourages people to ride their bike right and that encourages people who ride their bike to work for you and um if you want to be in a city that's like austin that's drawing people you know we are we have more people coming to the city than we have places to put them then other cities would take note and make those safe corridors so people have choice and options and those are the things that people are looking for when they make choices to move places especially as you're getting older right um cycling should be something that's for life and as you change from the 10 speed type bike and that's probably old language to the bike like i have where you're more upright to a recumbent bike or a tricycle or a cargo bike or electric bike you know cycling should be for life and so we should build those modes of transportation and if nothing taught us how important having access to bicycles is and was uh, would be the pandemic at the height of the pandemic when people had nothing to do and no place to go Cycling was the one thing that you could do and get you to the places that you needed to go. So I would, all those different things are, um, are reasons why other cities should take note and take heed and, and follow suit. Yeah. And I had to go back to this photo. <laughs> that photo was, we had so much fun that day yeah. and, um, every, and, and it was done safely, right? Yeah. In a safe, in a safe way. Yeah. So what would you say to a friend that is like, no, I, I, I don't support this bike lane. It's going to take parking away or it's going to take a motor vehicle traffic lane away. And, and the last time I looked, I, I looked at the bike lane and there was nobody riding in it. So why are we giving bike lanes to people? I, I, change is difficult. 
you know, and right. that's, and, and that's my background is in behavior change. And, and, and I understand that the change is, is difficult, but what advice would you have for a family member or a friend that, that just is having a hard time understanding why we would put resources and why would we would reallocate space that mm-hmm. is currently towards motor vehicles and, and try to encourage people to ride bikes? Well, I try to find out what their the reason is, what their no is, and you know, work them work them to yes. But you know, if they're worried, if they're concerned about parking, if they're concerned about traffic, you know, every person that's in the bike lane is one less person taking up a parking space and one less person on the highway who's relieving traffic. You know, that's a that's a great thing. Um, but I feel like the bike lanes are just as important as sidewalks, and so they should they just should be. They, that is something that every city and community should have for safety purposes so that people who are disabled are not sharing their bikeways with uh, people who are on bikes. So we have the sidewalks with the people who are on bikes when when the when the protected lanes uh, what and in the protected lanes so the, the cyclists can be in the protected lanes and it reduces fatalities and people may not. The person may not ride the bike, but their children ride bikes and their grandchildren will hopefully ride bikes. And so if they can't do it for themselves, they can do it for the people that they love. Because um, I would just try to continue to find their motivation and get them to the yes, because it's important and it's a part of infrastructure that every community should be able to participate and have. You know, it shouldn't just be for those who uh, live in prosperous neighborhoods. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What is sort of the final thought that you that you'd like to leave our audience with here today. Hmm. I guess my final thought would be if I can do it you can do it. Uh if you don't have a bike, you know, rent one. They're <laughs> they're fun to rent and if you can get that pedal assist bike Oh my God, they make you feel like Superman and so strong. So when you're in a new city, instead of getting on a bus and you're visiting, hop on a bike and and explore the city on the bike and use the the rental bicycle. Join some of these, if you're in Austin, join some of these groups like Tosalo that lend you a bike at their events so that you can get back on and remember how much fun it is because it's just as much fun as you remember as a child. Yeah. Good stuff. And if you didn't learn how to ride a bike as a child, guess what? We can support you. We'll, we'll, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the imperial we, the, you know, those of us who are out Absolutely. there that are passionate about getting more people riding more often, uh, and there's lots of us out there, and there's probably a group within your community, uh, like the Yellow Bike Program, like the Gisalo, uh Foundation, like some of these social uh, group rides that will embrace you and, 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 and help you to, to learn how to ride a bike. Movita, it has been such a pleasure having you on the Active Towns podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me. This was a great pleasure. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this very special conversation with Movita Salter. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, <laughs> leave a comment down below and share it with a friend, uh, which is probably the most important thing that you can do. Uh, this is a message that I think needs to get out to as many people as possible. And if you haven't done so already, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the Active Towns channel. Just hit that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell so that you can customize your notifications when I produce new content. And be sure to pop on over to the Active Town store uh, for your fun streets are for people, swag, water bottles, t-shirts, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, Again, new lower prices out there. And again, I don't make very much money from this merchandise, but again, every little bit helps. And I'd be incredibly grateful if you consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page. Just go to patreon.com slash active towns. Patrons activity ambassadors, if you will, (laughs) do receive uh, several benefits, including 15% off uh, the Active Town store, which is pretty cool, as well as early access to content, special content, and commercial free, which is kind of cool too. So uh, again, every little bit helps and I do appreciate any support you're able to provide, whether it is uh, sharing this content, uh, making a pledge, buying something from the store. Again, every little bit helps and uh, helps me grow the culture of activity movement. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. 
Cheers. Cheers.